everyone this is chapter 7 part 3 in this part we'll learn about estimating demand for a price setting firm so let's say you have a restaurant right there is a menu item that is $13 per plate okay so you have a restaurant so this is in a monopolistic the competitive market you're definitely a price setter firm this is not perfect competition okay so you want to increase price by 10% increase in price you want to know what will happen to your sales if you have this question you're in the right place this has recently happened with actually Netflix Netflix flex yet again increased prices by three dollars okay that is about it was about uh, I mean less than 20% okay less than 20% increase will their sales go down right um, so they believe me they do this analysis before they change their prices so Netflix never changes their prices by like okay you're let's say paying 15 bucks now you're gonna pay $50 they could do that because they're a price setting firm but this would lots of people would cancel their subscription including myself all right so what are the steps okay so to estimate demand functions for a price setting firm number one you have to specify price setting firms demand function that's going to be next slide number two we're going to collect data on variables in the firm's demand function cool and then we're going to estimate firms demand and then we're going to calculate elasticities okay so the demand will be a function of right xyz xyz these are general variables but we do have specific demand function forms such as this one so this is a linear empirical demand function of checkers pizza okay this is from the book q is the quantity of pizza sold oops <laughs> a b uh, p p is the price of the pizza c m m is the income of people in the area PAL, this is the price of a substitute, Al's Pizza. And the last one, E, price of Big Mac. Big Mac is a substitute too, but a little weaker substitute. This is some other pizza shop, pizza shop, you know, Al's Pizza's price. And then this is a, you know, Big Mac could be fast food, but it's not a direct, direct substitute, but it is a substitute. Okay. So if we run this regression, right, these are the results that we are given. All right, so let's let's interpret the parameter estimates. Oops. So intercept A, this is A hat, this is B hat. Okay, so price goes up uh, by one unit, one dollar. Sales go down by two hundred thirteen units. This is C hat. Incomes go up by one dollar. The sales go up. This is a normal good. Price of Al's pizza, D hat. If the price of Al's Pizza go up, sales go up by 101, so they're good substitutes. And this is E hat. If price of Big Mac goes up by $1, the sales go up by $71. So are these statistically significant? So you can either look at p-values or t-ratios. You can do the t-test or I, you know, look at the p-values. This is statistically significant at 1%. 1%. This is statistically significant at 5% price of uh, Al's Pizza. And what do we have here? This is also statistically significant at 5%. Okay, so this is what we found. We are given the numbers, right? Right now your pizza is $9.05. Median income or average income of the people in the area is $26,600. Price of Al's Pizza is $10.12. Price of Big Mac is $1.15. Why do we need this information? Because I want to find the Q hat. Okay. How do I find Q hat? Estimated quantity sold. We're going to plug in A hat right here plus B hat P plus C hat M. All these estimated coefficients will be plugged in from here d hat price of al pizza plus e hat price of big mac okay so as you can see beta hat is negative 213 right that goes here you just plug in those values plus i'm also given i'm also given p m 
AL price of Big Mac. So at these levels to find Q head. So if you plug in those values, what did I do? It's very simple, folks. What we did is for intercept, boom, plug in B head here, plug in times price from here. What's the next step? C head here, 0 0.091, blah, blah, C head times average incomes of people. Okay, then you have D hat here, 101. You're, you're more than welcome to actually do this. You're encouraged to do this. This is D hat, coefficient estimate of price of Al's pizza times the actual price of the uh, pizza at Al's. And the last one is going to be E hat 71.84448 times price of Big Mac. So Q hat you find is going to be 2784 given these numbers and your demand function. Your sales are going to be two, you're going to sell 2784.4 pizzas a month. Okay. So again, I'm just putting up all those numbers so that we can calculate now elasticities. Okay. When you're listening to this, you know, when you are watching this, I highly recommend you take notes. How do we do this? So remember estimated price of assist of demand formula was B head divide, uh, times price divided by quantity. So last step uh, we did, we found quantity, right? And we are given the price. We are going to put price 0 0.05 on top. Q is from the previous part we calculated 2784.4 and what's my b head b head i found it right from the estimation right here coefficient estimate of the own price 213 negative 213 so you plug 213 blah blah okay so if you calculate this you're going to find negative 0.694 in absolute value Right, this is going to be 0 0.694, less than one inelastic demand. In English, this means if you increase price by 1%, quantity will go down by 0.694%. Okay, it's inelastic. There's response, there's, you know, movement. So more, you know, you don't see 1% increase. Let's say if you increase the price by 10%, sales are going to go down by uh 6.94 percent so this positive negative right if you double the prices okay 100 percent right sales are going to go down by 69 percent it's really important to know what's going to happen to your sales before even changing the price and elasticities help you with that next we will talk about income elasticity of demand so it is c hat from the results m i'm given m divided by q right m is 226614 q is 2784.4 where do i find c hat from previous table very easy so we are going to go back so if we go back here what's the c hat 0 0.09109 okay um so you got this from the results m q if the income m goes up by one percentage points okay in the area you will see sales going up by 0 0.871 percentage points so if the incomes let's say everybody got a raise 10 percent increase in incomes increase then you're going to see the pizza sales to go up by 8.7 percent for some reason i can't write it this part okay next you can also calculate the cross price elasticity of checkers pizza with al's pizza what we do is we grab d hat that coefficient was 101.303 times price of al's pizza which is 10 12 divided by q so this number looks like this 0 0.068 which means one percent increase in al's pizza will cause sales in checkers pizza to go up 
right positive sign go up by three uh, 0.368% so if Alspitz increases their prices by 10% positive sales in checkers pizza will go up by 3.68% and the last one is also another substitute example right D head times price of Big Mac divide by quantity you calculate this this is what you're going to find so again price of Big Mac goes up Big Mac goes up I'm just going to say it Big Mac goes up by 1% quantity demanded for Al's pizza will go up by 0.03% so that's very weak right 10% increase even if the price of Big Mac doubles 100% increase multiply this by 100 sales and else pizza will go up by only three percent couple of things folks if you don't remember these formulas go to the part one and two right the meanings of elasticities are discussed in chapter seven parts one and two and i'll see you in part four